In this video, we take a look at some cabbages. We look at some trucks and we pay tribute to some fallen truckers. Junior Senior! G'day YouTubers, it's Senior here from Junior Senior Gaming and I'd like to take you on a trip to a small town called Gatton. If you're not sure where Gatton is, it's about one and a half hours away from Brisbane. Mostly surrounded by farmland, this little community supplies a large portion of vegetables to Queensland and some of New South Wales. We were invited to visit the Transport Museum in Gatton a while ago and decided it was time we go. So we made all the arrangements and off we went. After our very relaxing drive to Gatton, we found our destination and made our way in. Once inside, we met our host and proceeded to our tour. There was a wide variety of vehicles to look at, mostly trucks and the oldest dating back to the early 1900s. One of the first trucks we looked at was the 1981 Mack Cruise Liner. Not a very popular truck in Australia due to the Kenworth K100 being released before this model came out. This truck, however, was more popular overseas because of the movie Stroker Ace in 1983. This is a Mack B61 decked out in its original Nolan's paint. Nolan's only had a few of these trucks and they were well used by the company carrying up to a triple road train. The truck itself has a Thermodyne motor with about 185 to 200 horsepower. A twin stick quad gearbox makes it a real challenge for the driver to operate. This truck was one of the backbones of Australia in its time. If you didn't want a B model Mac, this was the one to choose. Most loads of, for this truck would include large bales of hay to crates of lumber. After the war, White stopped making cars and started making trucks. The company decided to make some smaller model trucks, but mainly large heavy haulage vehicles to take on the big loads. This particular model has been hand scrolled, adding that extra flair of its time. The powerhouse of the particular truck is a Detroit diesel with around 200 horsepower. In Australia, this truck was a direct competitor to the Mac B model, as we discussed earlier. The Rambling Rose Mac B61 is one of the better B model Macs that you'll ever see. The restoration cost excess of $80,000 Australian to get uh, halfway and that's where they stopped counting. The reason for this is that the owner's father first purchased this truck in 1964 where he continued to run it until 1978 when the, his father traded it for an F model Mac. The son loved the B61 so much that after his father passed away he tracked it down and restored it and after six years this is what came out like. This is the more modern version of the International S2600 series truck made especially for the Australian Army. Not a very popular truck in the collector's circle, it's considered as just a farm truck. The Army used this particular model with road trains, hauling tanks and other military needs. This truck has since been replaced by the newer Mack models. I was told that the older drivers didn't particularly like the newer Macs compared to these older trucks. The reason being it's simpler and you know what to expect.
This truck was used to haul produce around the Lockyer Valley in the 1970s. Originally it was made as a flat top tray, towing a two wheel DOS trailer. Later it was fitted with a tag axle allowing its payload to be increased. This truck is also fitted with a G-Well bag loader to assist with loading the hay bales and potatoes from the ground to the back of the truck. This model truck has a 300 cubic six-cylinder engine with a Clark 5-speed gearbox and now has a Vauxhall Bedford 2-speed differential fitted. Its restoration was done in about a month but the original condition was very much a disaster before its restoration. The Leyland Hippo was a direct competition to the Mac B model, but due to it being designed and built in England, it was not cut out for Australian conditions. And this is why this is very rare to see here in Australia. At the museum, there is a Western transport section dedicated to the trucking company that moved Australia. They were the biggest privately owned transport company and the biggest operator of Mack trucks in the Southern Hemisphere, starting with one truck in 1934 and then in their peak having 500 trucks and trailers. Based out of Toowoomba, this company would service the whole of Queensland daily doing such projects as transporting the pipe for the Mooney pipeline to moving all the oil rigs around the country. The company eventually was bought out by Bell's brother Western Australia in 1971-72. The 1965 R190 was purchased by Mick and Faye Gardner in 1974 with a bogey strap trailer for $3,900 and was used for runs from Melbourne to Sydney and Melbourne to Adelaide. In 1976 it was involved in a head-on collision with a car at Keith, South Australia. The truck was a complete write-off with the front axles being twisted. It was rebuilt with a larger pair of chassis rails and they also put in a 6V53GM 5-speed gearbox with a 3-speed Joey. It was then used interstate until 1987 when it was bought by their nephew Mark and was repainted, mechanicals gone over and highly detailed to the condition it is today. It then sat in the shed for the next 20 years until Mark went to the American Iron Show in 2007. He went home and blew the dust off the truck and checked everything out, ready for the 2008 American Iron Show. This truck is still operational today. Since there is so many trucks to look at in the museum, here is a montage of some of the other trucks that we looked at. After the museum, we went and viewed the Lights on the Hill Memorial, which is situated within the transport hub of Gatton, Queensland in Lake Apex Park, just behind the museum. Lights on the Hill Truck and Coach Drivers Memorial is a memorial wall for truck and coach drivers who have passed before their time. These people have contributed 
substantially to the Australian transport industry and the wall is a way of immortalising their sacrifices and triumphs in the service of their country. Over the years, numerous volunteers have given their time to bring this wall to life for the families and mates of deceased drivers so that they can all have somewhere to go to honour the memories of their loved one. On the second Saturday of October each year, Truckee's families and friends from around the country assemble before the memorial to honour the drivers whose names will be added to the wall that year and whose names already reside here. This service is open to anyone to attend and drivers are encouraged to bring along their trucks to join in the service. There is a memorial convoy held every year on the last Saturday of February. It gives drivers and their families the opportunity to get together with other truckies in a social environment whilst making the public aware of how important truckies are to Australia. The convoy departs from both Archerfield and Toowoomba and converges in Gatton. Unfortunately, due to the expanding numbers involved, the 2016 convoy has been cancelled while a suitable venue is found, hopefully for later in 2016. If not, it will be 2017. For anyone who is interested, there will be a link to the Lights on the Hill webpage below and also their Facebook page. We would like to thank the Queensland Transport Museum for allowing us to view and record the vehicles they have on display. We would also like to give a big thanks to our guide on the day, Nick, who is a follower of Junior Senior Gaming and contacted us offering to show us around the museum. Nick was a very informative and knowledgeable guide and answered every question we had for him about the trucks. Nick, like others, volunteers his time to the museum and cheerfully gave us over two hours of his time to personally show us around the museum. Thank you, Nick. We highly recommend anyone who is within the area of Gatton to stop by and view the Queensland Transport Museum and to take the time to have a tour. Trucks change regularly depending upon availability and the generosity of the owners to loan for display.